feedback from the simple things you're producing. When the audio isn't good, we get more negative feedback on poor audio than poor video. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And that, that surprises. Yeah. We, we didn't realize we really need to pay more attention to the audio. Side. Would you see that in major? I mean, you, you see a film like. Uh, Blair Witch Project, or those paranormal activities, <laughs> or you know what I mean, things like that, where they're other films, right? Where the video, you know, this old saying is bad audio will make a good picture worse, and good audio will make a bad, bad picture, picture better. better. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, yeah. and yeah, that's really important. I, I was thinking about that when you mentioned using the Zoom recorder yeah. for those yeah. cameras. That's what we, we, use, we use the Zoom recorder now exclusively yeah. instead of the, the it's really important. mic on the camera. Well, it's because you can kind of sit there. The picture can make up for itself. Your eyes kind of adjust to that. Right. But the sound, you have to be able to hear what's going on and affects your emotions, it affects your brain. Right. If it's crackling noise, yeah. that kind of stuff too. Yeah. So this one obviously had a big call to action on the end too. Um, the the previous one with the um, <laughs> nuts or whatever the cancer <laughs> cancer group, they had. You know, they wanted you to go out to their website and see information. That was their call to action. This one has the donate call to action at the end. So each video is a little bit different. So you're using them for different reasons, and you have to think about that beforehand to be able to figure out, you know, does that affect my message? Does it affect what I'm saying during the video? And then obviously what we do to, to close it up at the end. Do any of these have any history with them of the production to, to at least give somebody an idea of, oh, they actually went through several iterations and started with <coughs> this and wound up with this? Um, they don't specifically say that towards mm -hmm. the end. So the way the do good Awards happen, um, they take submissions kind of early in the year, and then um, they announce the do good Award winners, usually at the NTC, the Intense National oh, okay. Conference. Um, so usually in... March, April, that time frame. So they'll, they'll accept them. I think they, even this page has details for, for each one. And then the last one they show is, um, this one is a youth media award, which I think is interesting. We'll watch a, a bit of this. Um, so this is a, a youth angle doing a video. This one's longer, it's like 10 minutes, so we won't watch all of it, but we'll. <laughs> Cher oncle Jean-Paul, j'ai appris le temps à écrire à vous sur mon expérience comme une réfugiée d'appartement même-même. C'est un très difficile un mouvement appartement, particulièrement à prendre une nouvelle chose là, c'est une chose qui me dérange beaucoup. Cette chose sur la réception de, dans mon école partout le monde. Et même quand je parle, et me rire comme je suis une Africaine, mais je ne suis pas seule, je suis avec les autres amis. Je vais, je vais faire reconnaître à vous que je vais essayer d'adapter par évoluer. I am making a film about refugees in Baltimore to help people understand the experiences that refugees go through. Many of my friends are refugees too, and I want everyone to hear their point of view. The hardest part is my family and leaving my friends, leaving my home, leaving my country, leaving everything behind me. The hardest part is like when I have to leave my father, my friends, like I have to leave everything. Oh, I'm going to miss everything about it. I mean, basically, I'm in the fun playing soccer with my friends, running, playing with my dog. And that's how the fun me and my family had, <coughs> had back in Africa. I mean, that type of fun I don't get here. The reason that we moved from Iraq and left Iraq, um, some group attacked my father. They took him for 20 days, and they were punching him, kicking him. In America, I expect it would, be, it would be a beautiful life. You live a free life, you can do whatever you want to. There and here is very different, you know. When we're over there, you think everything is easy, you know. You can, like, just get up and say, oh, I want to be a millionaire, I want to be rich. But it don't work that way. Well, I spent, like, like good education. I ain't know when you, like, not from here, when you come over here, the student, like, tease you. But the thing is, like, American kids, 
acting like they are the best in the world. They all think that like we all live in like you know jungles or or like we you know we were like flip flops to school. We work we walk like miles and miles to go to school and stuff like that. <laughs> they be calling us like African booty scratchers. Like I don't and they be saying like we be naked and like we don't wear no shoes and stuff. But that don't really happen. Like it hurt my feelings when they say that to me. Many people in Baltimore don't know what a refugee is. A refugee is different from an immigrant. A refugee is someone who has to flee the country of his or her nationality because they have suffered persecution on account of race, religion, nationality, or political opinion. Once that person has lived in the second country, he or she can apply for refugee status, allowing him or her to relocate to a third country. I decided to go speak to some experts at Baltimore International Rescue Committee, an organization that helps refugees relocate to America, including my own family. I'm a refugee from Iran. <coughs> uh, in 2006, I had to leave the country because uh, being a woman who was working in the humanitarian field, I was under the threat of being killed. I had to leave with my family and go to a second country, which is Jordan, and I was resettled in the U.S. by the International Rescue Committee in Baltimore in 2008. Baltimore has a large number of refugees because over the years there have been growing and building communities. Their families are starting new lives, their families are trying to learn English, trying to find new jobs, trying to learn to navigate around the city, all of those things. Most of the people who are coming, uh, are either coming from refugee camps or coming from war zones. I think coming to Baltimore, they are lonely, they are afraid, and they are looking for friends. I remember how hard it was to fit in when I was younger. But you can see the difference. You know, here's a youth trying to do a video. It does it pretty well, I think. Um, but you saw a couple differences maybe between this one and the previous one. What did you think? Yeah, I, thought, I think, um, I don't want to accuse him of cheating. I think that, uh, it, it, you see when you saw her, just when we were talking about the audio, mm -hmm. that the audio quality went that, like when you saw the camera set up with her, mm -hmm. it, it went, the quality went mm -hmm. down a little bit, whereas in the beginning, it seemed like the interviews were more professionally done. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that was interesting, but I think it's a way of trying to, you know, set it up and then bring you into the part that she probably actually set up the camera and did that interview mm -hmm. um, with the two uh, with the uh, the two people there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I thought that was interesting. So I, I would say, like starting, like you know, you need to start wherever you're starting point is and when you're okay speaking to your audience yes but also sort of looking at your budget and being realistic in what you can actually do you know and you know it may be you know if you're using uh, a Mac you, you could you could do a hell of a lot of things with your iMovie you know as far as you know getting some video just from a flip cam or from whatever you know camera yep just in an order of magnitude sense, the the video with the still shots about the little girl with cancer, with the lemonade stand one. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's what was the budget for that? I mean, I know you don't know, but I mean, what? what no was idea. It? That's it's really hard to, to sort of pin so down exactly. We've done what was um, good, for the NC Center for Nonprofits conference. We did. We had several stills that um, pic, digital pictures that we had, um, and we created a short clip it for um, kind of to promote our conference so pictures from last year's conference a little bit like that some uh, animated words that kind of thing some transitions between the pictures you, there's a program called Animoto where you can use that and it you just upload the images and then you choose the transitions and what you want to say and it does the rest